there, some are air actuated. So what happens is if you get into an accident, they'll compress. Well, if we're walking around it, working on it, we could actually shoot out and cause one of the firefighters to get hurt. We also have airbags. You have driver side, passenger <laughs> side. You have curtain airbags, which comb the whole way. So what they're doing is right now, they're making sure that the vehicle is safe and is not gonna move. The first thing you see them doing right now, Valencia, turn it down with it. What you see them doing right now is cribbing the vehicle. What they're doing is they're putting chocks under it, or we call it cribbing, but basically it's wooden blocks or it's plastic blocks. And we're basically gonna stabilize the vehicle and prevent it from moving. So what they're doing is they're shoving this stuff under, they're wedging it. You can also, if we're in a, if we need to get done a little bit faster, we can just deflate the tires. We don't want to stab tires like in the movies because then they can explode and actually hurt us. So what they're doing is right now, they're, check, they're making sure this vehicle is safe to approach. From there, once we secure the vehicle, then we actually start our 360 or our walk around. So when we walk around a building, we're actually, when we walk around a car, we're checking all the doors and making sure that they open. If they don't open, what you saw them do is they'll break the glass so we can access the patient. Now, if you notice, he broke the glass away from the patient. So what we're gonna do is he's gonna gain access, he's gonna go up, make sure that they're okay, and we're gonna cover them with a tarp or a piece of paper, something to protect them. That first firefighter's job is also to hold what we call a C-spine and to do an initial assessment and make sure that you're okay. Because depending on how badly you are hurt, we could do one of two things. One, we can just open your door and pull you out, which could cause more harm than good. It could actually hurt you. And the other is we're gonna take the car and we're gonna cut it up and we're gonna pull it away from your body. And then we're gonna safely pull you out. So depending on how, how much you, or how badly you are injured, that's gonna determine the manner in which we get you out. So we have the firefighter inside right now. He's actually covering up the patient and he's gonna hold the net to make sure that there's no further injuries. What you see the crew in front of you doing right here at the front of the car is they're accessing the battery. One of the things we have to do is we have to secure the battery and cut it. Now, even though we may cut the power to the vehicle, some of these batteries, some of the power on the vehicle can last up to 20 additional minutes once we cut it. So that means airbags can deploy. And remember, we have airbags in the front, the rear, and the sides. It just depends on the make and model of the vehicle. Now, the battery may not always be here. Sometimes the battery is in the trunk. Sometimes the battery is underneath the driver's seat, the passenger seat, the front seat, back seat. Depending on the make, model, nationality of the car, the battery could be almost anywhere. But we train to where we know most extrication procedures for almost all vehicles. What you see them using, this individual at the front, he's using a set of cutters. Now, what they're, what they're actually utilizing is called extrication equipment, or it's called hydraulic extrication equipment. We have cutters, which actually are doing what, they, what he's actually doing right here. They're just designed to cut. They're not designed to do anything else. Then we have spreaders, which again, it says it in the name, they're just designed to pry things open. Then we have combination tools, which can do both. But as you'll notice, they're actually doing things at the same time. We have a crew working to try to gain access to the battery. We have a crew trying to gain access to the vehicle. Now, the, the, just so you know, this is a live car. This is a car we bought, we bought from off base. It is not safe, but we're trained to do this. So there are real hazards present while these individuals are extricating this vehicle. What you can't see them doing on the other side is the same thing they just did over here. They're trying to overcome this little tiny bolt called a Nader bolt. Uh, it's named after its inventor of the set of, of the actual bolt. But what they're trying to do is overcome that so they can pry the door open. Now you wouldn't think that a one and a half inch long piece of hardened steel would prevent us from getting in a vehicle, but it actually will. Sometimes it can actually take a really long time to get into a vehicle, depending on the manufacturer, uh, the manufacturer type.
continue on with the extrication. We're probably going to have another firefighter and two medics standing, actually trying to treat the casualty as much as we can without Red it. Helmet. Red helmets, sometimes we normally just supervise. And then you also have one other color, those are white helmets. Those are chief fire officers. Uh, if you see a white helmet on this helmet, probably going to get that done. So we just put the scan on the patient. I'm sorry, the head. Again, it's a little half back board. It just wants to the top of the head, but not to the tail bone head. What, they, what they're doing now is they got them seated, they have the patient secure. They're actually going to lift them up, slide the back board, slide them out a little bit, and then slide them onto the back board. Now this is when we actually have the because we can't actually treat you while you're inside the vehicle. If we have to treat you and you're stuck in the vehicle, we're just going to cut the door open and pull you out. If you need treatment that fast, we're just going to pull you out. Because there's not a lot we can do if you're sitting up right. All thing we can do is pretty much hold your head still, make sure your airway's open, try to control any small bleeding. But if you need care, we're just going to bring you out safely. Normally at this point, there's a medical team. Pretty much as soon as we have them on the backboard, we transition you to a gurney and then we immediately load you to the back of the ambulance and we conduct your treatment on the way to the hospital. We wouldn't put you on the ground and start your treatment here. We would load you into the back of the ambulance and get you out of here. Here in Misawa, luckily we're only about five, seven minutes of travel, even from the farthest point of the installation to the main group. All right, that's it. This is what your car will look like when we're done with it. It's probably going to look a little bit worse, actually. We didn't do it a couple of things. But does anybody have any questions? Or what happened? No? All right, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for coming out and watching.